Have you ever sold something on eBay to someone famous? Hey, welcome to This Week in Flips, my weekly show where I talk about the ups and downs and in-betweens of selling on eBay. So I sell on eBay part-time and my hope is this show provides an example of what's possible if you're considering reselling on eBay as a side hustle. I've been selling on eBay for a really long time, for like 20 plus years. Over time, I've sold to a lot of interesting places and people. I've sold to museums, I've sold to celebrities, I've sold to prop departments. For example, I sold something to the prop department of Young Sheldon. You'll see here a note from the buyer saying, I'm the prop master on a TV show called Young Sheldon. I'm hoping to use this in our next episode. TV schedules being what they are, time is being tight. Anything you could do to ship quickly would be most appreciated. This was a pair of vintage headphones that I sold and shipped out to Young Sheldon. I don't watch that show, so I'm not actually sure if it ever made it to air, but if you see some vintage headphones on that show, let me know. So I also sold some Coke bottles to a TV show recently. It was a TV show called Grease, Rise of the Pink Ladies. I think it was a made-for-TV musical remake of the original 1970s movie of Grease. Uh, they bought the these vintage Coke bottles. And again, I never watched the show, so I'm not sure if they ever made it to air, but it's pretty cool to get uh, a message from someone looking to feature something that you have in your store on a show. And in this past week, I sold another item to a prop department. And this one I'm super excited about because it's one of my favorite shows. And so it's one of my top 10 sales. So I'm going to talk about that here in a minute. First, let's talk through some of the interesting finds that I had this week. First up is this Faraday Aztec Print Canyon over shirt. And so this is like a shirt or a jacket or a shacket. And it's a really desirable brand. So I paid up a little bit, uh, $15. It says it was at a garage sale. It was not a traditional garage sale, more like a uh, business, like a kitchen and bath business that opened up their showroom floor and had a bunch of people selling stuff. It was very strange, very bizarre. I did buy a lot of stuff from there, including this Faraday shirt. And you'll definitely want to keep an eye out for that brand. There's what the logo looks like. That's what the tag looks like. Faraday's a very good brand. This was probably a $150 shirt. Uh, originally, I've got it listed for $56.99 plus $7 in shipping. I also found at that same weird kitchen and bath garage sale a box of drawer pulls. There were 66 drawer pulls in total uh, from a lot of brands like Restoration Hardware and Anthropology. And I paid a dollar each for the entire box of 66. So I spent $66 on that. And I think this is going to be a really good buy. It's probably not going to sell super fast, but at a dollar each, these are going to sell anywhere from $15 to $25 per drawer pull and it's going to make a lot of good money over time. Also, this past weekend at an estate sale, I picked up this. Panasonic FM30 uh, boombox. And so boomboxes are really great to look out for. I think the market has sunk a little bit, especially during COVID. They were very hot, but still, even so, this uh, I picked up for $5. I tested it. The radio works, the tape player works, and I put it up for $50 plus shipping. And I've already got a bunch of watchers on this. And so the sale through rate is very good. I'm not sure why this one in particular is in high demand. I don't know. It looks like any old boombox, but it should sell, you know, for this $50 plus shipping. So also at an estate sale, I found this hip brace. At estate sales, it's really good to look out for this type of medical device, like a hip brace or a knee brace or elbow brace, things like that. Now, you can't sell every medical device on eBay. In fact, a lot of medical devices are banned from eBay. So you want to check and make sure that what you're buying to resell on eBay is not banned from reselling on eBay. And any sort of like hip brace or knee brace or elbow brace, things like that, all of those are totally fine to resell on eBay. I sell them all the time. I picked this one up, I think for $5. Yeah. And I got listed for $100 plus shipping. And so these things can be really valuable. Again, probably a slow seller, uh, but they do really good and you find them a lot at estate sales. All right, let's take a look at my numbers for the week. Looks like I had a 682% ROI, which is right about average for me and a 52% net profit margin, which is also right around average for me. But sales have definitely picked up on eBay. Hopefully you're seeing an increase in sales as well. This past week was really good for me. Last week, I think I did about $500 net and I did over double uh, this week. So I had $1,755 in gross income and a net income of $1,056. So it feels super good to be in the four digit net per week club again. It's been a while, uh, but excited to get some eBay sales ramping back up. Just to show you here how slow sales have been, I'm going to change this to 90 days and show you one thing on a graph. This is a graph that shows the number of new listings versus the number of sales. And you'll see that they match pretty well. Um, when, you know, when I list more, I'm going to be selling more Then I've got a dip here because I took a week long vacation and put on vacation mode. So no listing and no selling was going on then. And then it picked back up and then look right here, kind of this early to mid February where my listing volume went way up, but my sa sales volume 
stayed almost flat or even a little bit down. And to me, that signals right there that there was just a very slow time in eBay, you know, bigger than just my store. And tracking your data like this allows you to see those types of trends. And when you see something like this, something is definitely up. I sell across all categories and the stuff that I sell has a variety of sell-through rates, but I know my average is really well. And so to see this sort of discrepancy where my number of new listings is very high and the number of sales during that same time period is not high and is in fact lower, that's definitely a sign that things were slow more broadly on eBay. Let's, we'll change this back to the last seven days and take a look here. So again, $1,755 and a 1056 net income. Looks like in the past week I had 49 new listings and a total of 40 sales over the past week. My average time to sell is four months, which uh, my average usually is around three months. And so this week that just means I was selling older inventory. So that's a good thing. And I spent a total of $230 on new inventory of the past week. All right, let's dig into the top 10 sales of the week. Coming in at number 10 is this North Face Aphrodite pair of pants that I got at a Goodwill for $8. I normally wouldn't pick something like this up, but it was new with tags. I think the tag said it was like, 60 or $70 pair of pants. And so at $8, I figured why not? One of the challenges with North Face stuff like this and a lot of clothing is identifying the exact one. If you don't have the tag, not every manufacturer is going to show the model number or the style. Um, some, some have a style code and you can use that, but others don't. I, I'm pretty sure that North Face does not. You can correct me in the comments if I'm wrong, but sometimes these things can be very hard to identify. And when it's hard to identify, it makes it more difficult to sell. Cause if you don't know exactly what you have, it's gonna be difficult to price and you're not gonna be able to put keywords in there that signal to the buyers that, hey, this is the exact thing that I'm looking for. And so with these, I knew the exact pair of pants, had the model number on there, had the UPC on there. It took two days to sell, they sold very quickly. I had a net return of $20.90 and an ROI of 261% for the 10th best flip of the week. Coming at number nine are these Levi's denim jeans. If you saw in my video last week, you'll notice I picked these up in an estate sale for $2 and a big pile of pants and it happened to be one pair that had tags on it and that was this pair and they sold in five days for $39.99 free shipping and came in with a net return of $26.84 for the ninth best flip of the week and really good ROI on that one 1300% so good to see those getting out the door. Coming in at number eight is this Nissan Murano master lock switch and so if you all have watched the show before you know that I sell a decent amount of these car parts. I bought a big box that has a ton of car parts in it mostly window switches like this and um, I use them as filler and so when I don't have that much stuff to list I just dig into that box and list a few of these car parts and they're really slow sellers and they're dirty and they're kind of a pain in the butt to list but they make some decent money and this one sold for $49.99 and a net return of $34 even and a 1,133% ROI for the eighth best flip of the week. On to number seven is this L.L. Bean's Women's Packaway Down Black Jacket and so this is like a little down puffer jacket I paid five dollars at a savers which is a really good price. It sold for $54.98 that's $49.99 plus $4.99 in shipping. Took 18 days to sell. Kind of a funny story on this one. You probably, if you sell on eBay, especially clothes, you get a lot of people sending you messages asking a variety of questions. And one of my dirty little secrets here is that I don't often respond to those questions, especially if they're just asking clarifying information that can already be found in the listing. Like, what is the condition of this jacket? Which is what this person asked me. I have found that that's a signal that it's gonna be hard to satisfy a buyer like that. If they're nitpicking a used jacket, um, chances are they get in the mail they're going to find something wrong with it and want to return it. So I just generally ignore those messages, but sometimes I get bored and I reply to them. And this is one of those situations. I'll show you the, I'll show you the message. I don't necessarily recommend you do this, by the way. This person reached out and says, can you tell me about the condition? And my response was, I'm pretty sure I was able to remove all of the dog vomit. And so I, you know, usually I just ignore those completely. I don't know. I was in a weird mood and decided to just respond with that. And they said, you make it sound so nice. It's just hard to tell since it's black. And like, I get it, whatever. I just don't like dealing with these types of buyers who are very, very picky about the condition of a used item that already is well photographed and has a good description on it. And so it's going to be hard to make those buyers happy. But this person, after my response, that's all I said to them. I'm pretty sure I was able to remove all the dog vomit. The person still bought it. <laughs> I was like, I was shocked. By the way, you don't get penalized for not answering questions. Some people think that it, it works against you in the algorithm, but there's no policy anywhere across eBay that says you have to respond to messages. Uh, and so sometimes I just don't because 
because I don't want to waste my time or I don't want to sell it to that person uh, because I think that they're going to be a problematic buyer. All right, coming in at number six is this Black & Decker Flexible Snake Light. This thing is from the 90s. It's a new old stock. It has never been opened before. I bought it at a garage sale this past summer for $4 and it looks like it sold for $59.98 and my net return was $40.13 for just over a thousand percent ROI for the seventh best flip of the week. Although I was noticing this person reached out to me for an update on the shipping and I checked and looked and it says that USPS is still awaiting the item. And so when I go to the post office, I just drop all my stuff off. I don't wait around to get scanned. Depending on your post office, you may want to actually wait in line to get it scanned. I never bother with that. And typically everything goes pretty, pretty well. But this one, for some reason, has not been scanned. And it's been five or six days. All the other items that I shipped at that same time have been scanned. And a lot of them have been delivered. So I'm probably going to open up a missing package case on the behalf of the buyer here. If it is indeed missing and I don't see any action on the, on the tracking label for the next, you know, five or six days, I will probably just go ahead and refund the buyer directly and then submit an insurance claim on behalf of the buyer and then get paid from USPS for that lost package, which usually takes a couple months usually. But uh, this situation doesn't happen very often. It's pretty annoying when it does. Uh, my guess is this will still show up at some point. Um, when you open up that missing package case, sometimes, I don't know what they do behind the scenes, but sometimes things get found. And so hopefully that's the case here, but we'll wait and see. Coming in at number five is this Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Troll Doll. So this is a crossover troll Ninja Turtles from the 90s, 1992, Raphael. I've actually sold one of these before. I got this at an estate sale. I paid 10 bucks for it and it took two months to sell, but it sold for $66.99. That's 60 plus $6.99 in shipping. My net return for the fifth best flip of the week is $43.16 and the ROI is 432%. And so uh, not all Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle stuff does well, but the stuff from the 90s typically does like this and not all troll stuff does well, but crossover items like this tend to do well. If it's if it's just a troll doll, chances are it's probably not going to be worth much. But if it's a troll doll that's like a troll Ninja, Ninja Turtles doll, uh, it might do better. And so I like to look for those crossover items. I call them crossover items. I don't know if that's the real name for them, but just meaning that they're, they're not one brand. They're kind of two brands coming together because this appeals to troll buyers. It also appeals to Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle buyers. And this one went for a premium, you know, $66. That's a pretty good sale and a pretty good net return and ROI, 432% for the fifth best flip of the week. Coming at number four is this OXO coffee maker. And so I got this at, where did I get this? Yeah, I got this at a St. Vincent de Paul and I knew I was gonna buy it immediately because it's the exact same coffee maker that I have at home. And it is the wire cutter top pick. And it's been the wire cutter top pick for like, three years. And so I just know it's a desirable coffee maker. I know it's a good coffee maker because I use it every day. And I know how much it costs. I think I paid like 160 or 70 for it originally, you know, five or six years ago. Um, this one sold for $86.98. That's $79.99 plus $6.99 in shipping. The net return was $50.70. But that's not the coolest thing about this. The coolest thing about it is that I sold it to a TV prop department and not just any TV prop department, but one of my favorite TV shows, which is called The Bear on FX. It's a show about the restaurant industry. And so super good show, just an amazing show. So when the sale came in, I noticed on the shipping address, it said here, Sweet 401, The Bear. And so I thought, well, that's interesting. What is that? And it, then I noticed it was in Chicago and I know that that show films in Chicago. Uh, so those were two clues right there. And then, you know, I just took the, the buyer's name and, and Googled her name and she's a producer on the show. So super cool. And I ended up reaching out to her directly through messages. I said, thanks for your order. Huge fan of the show. Should be there in a few days. She said, thanks so much. I uh, hope you get to see it on camera. So I hope I do get to see it on camera. I'm going to be watching season three whenever it comes out and looking out for my coffee maker. How cool would that be? Okay, coming in at number three is this Staub Enameled Cast Iron Roaster. And so this is... Uh something that you put a chicken on, a full chicken, right down on that spear and uh, cook it in the oven. Staub is a really good brand. It's a French brand, very similar to Le Creuset, similar in quality. This thing we got for $5 at a Savers, which is an incredible price. It was brand new, still had the stickers on it. We sold it for $141.99. It took a while at nine months, but the net return was $108.25, over a 2,000% ROI. On to number two is this John Varvatos jacket. This is a reversible jacket, really nice. It had an MSR 
MSRP of $598. I got it off of an Amazon return pallet. It was brand new, never been used. I've had it forever though. And I gave it a $20 cost of goods. It sold for $179 free shipping and the net return was $128.23. ROI of 641%. Also a funny story is this had a wooden coat hanger in it and the coat hanger wouldn't fit in the box and it didn't. I didn't have the coat hanger in the listing. Anyway, so we kept the coat hanger and I thought it was actually this morning. I was like, you know what? We'll just, I'll list this coat hanger. Maybe somebody will want it because it was a nice coat hanger. I'll show you here. It said John Varvatos. It was a nice wooden coat hanger. This thing sold in 16 minutes. And I was like, oh my gosh, what, what, why, why did it sell in 16 minutes? I, I mean, I didn't price it very high, $17.85 free shipping. Cause I, you know, do people pay good money for, for hangers? I guess they do. And I guess I underpriced this, but uh, kind of a funny, funny thing. This thing was probably going to go in the trash or at least just sit on my, on my rack to have other future jackets be hung on. But I figured why not? Let's see if it sells. And it did in 16 minutes. So pretty weird. Coming back from this John Varvatos jacket onto number one, it's this Kohler single handle lavatory faucet. And so this Guy sold for $239.99. That's $225 plus $14.99. I did take a best offer on this. I had it listed in the $300 range. I got this off of a pallet of Kohler returns. And so it was nothing but Kohler stuff. Most of it was unused. Some of it was like an attempted install and some of it was like a busted install. And so, but 90% of this entire pallet was all sellable stuff. And this was a long time ago. This was back in October of 2022. And so what is that? That's a year and a half ago that I got this pallet. I'm still selling this stuff. And so there's not much left. It's all, a lot of the high dollar stuff is left because I think, you know, it's just going to take longer to sell something that's high dollar like this. This one had $173.72 net return, 869% ROI for the best flip of the week. So usually on the show, when I sell this Kohler stuff, I get people in the comments asking, where do you buy a Kohler pallet like that? And I had a personal connection to get this specific pallet, but I got that connection through Facebook Marketplace. And so I bought something from a woman on Facebook Marketplace. I ended up getting into a conversation with her. I ended up telling her that I was a reseller and we made that connection there. And she's been giving me inventory like this since then. And so every once in a while, I'll, I'll hit her up and say, Hey, do you got anything that you're looking to sell? So the reason I'm telling you that is because it's, it's a good thing to be out there and talking about what you do. And so don't be shy about saying you're a reseller, let people know, cause you never know what those connections will turn into. And I just happened to get a really good connection with this person simply because I bought something from them and told them I was a reseller. So I would encourage you to do the same thing. Thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you like these types of videos, I do them every week. So hit that subscribe button. But if you can't wait that long, you can try this episode right here to the right of my head or the episode to the left of my head. Those are the last two weeks of my This Week in Flips videos. And otherwise, I'll see you next Monday. Thanks.